Hi guys, Olive here, here today to bring you a book haul, a nonfiction book haul for Nonfiction November. I have been accumulating nonfiction books since my big three-part haul earlier this year, and I have to say the stack of books I have beside me might be the most Olive haul I have ever done. We have some science books, nature books, animals, birds, food writing, psychology, books on death. This haul might end up being the video on my channel that perfectly summarizes my nonfiction reading taste, but without further ado, let's look at the books. The first book I'd like to show you is Grunt, The Curious Science of Humans at War by Mary Roach. I really enjoyed Stiff when I read it earlier this year, and I've been having this feeling that I would really like to work my way through all of her books. So I decided to pick up this one. This is her most recently published book, all about the science of of what people go through in war situations, both on the battlefield and off. Also on that same mission, I picked up Bunk, The Curious Coupling of Science and Sex, also by Mary Roach. This book will be filled with a lot of scientific research into sex, but also, hopefully, a lot of Mary Roach's very dry humor. I also picked up A Walk in the Woods, Rediscovering America on the Appalachian Trail. Just like with Mary Roach, I would really like to work my way through all of Bill Bryson's books, and I became interested in this one when I read a snippet from it during a voice acting class I was taking. I was practicing my narration on it, and I really enjoyed it. This is all about the author's experience walking the Appalachian Trail, which stretches from Georgia to Maine. And since we're talking about walking, I also picked up The Lost Art of Walking, The History, Science, Philosophy, and Literature of Pedestrianism by Jeff Nicholson. This is a thorough examination of walking and how it represents a core of who we are as humans. It also looks at its place in art, history, pop culture, music. You wouldn't think on the surface that something so every day would warrant its own book like this until you have that realization that because it's so every day that there is so much material for a book like this. I am fascinated. Next up is The Way Through the Woods on Mushrooms and Mourning by Long Lit Wound. My mom actually pointed this book out to me when we were out book shopping together. She knows my taste very well. But this book is all about a grieving widow who finds an unexpected form of healing in the hobby of mushroom hunting. I also picked up Over the Hills and Far Away, The Life of Beatrix Potter by Matthew Dennison. Speaking of my mom, I think she's going to want to read this one after I am done with it. This is a biography of children's book author Beatrix Potter and the author takes a selection of quotations from her children's book stories and uses those as tie-ins for the author's life story. It sounds adorable. Next up is a slim memoir called Gone Feral, Tracking My Dad Through the Wild by Novella Carpenter. In this book, the author talks about her experience of trying to find her father, who was a 73-year-old homesteader and Korea War veteran, after he went missing. He'd been absent from the author's life for years and was having ongoing mental health issues. So not only in this book does she talk about her efforts to find him after he went missing, but she takes a look back at their strained relationship over the years. This sounds like entirely my cup of tea, and I was definitely drawn to it because it reminded me a little bit of Rough Magic by Laura Pryor Palmer. Next up is Water, Ice, Stone, Science and Memory on the Antarctic Lakes by Bill Green. This is a book of scientific insights in addition to meditations on the beauty and brutality of nature as demonstrated by the Antarctic Lakes where the author was doing research. Research. This sounds like a perfect pick for winter. I also picked up Istanbul, Memories and the City by Orhan Pamuk. This is a portrait of the city of Istanbul written by the famous Turkish novelist. You may have noticed from some of my previous hauls, but I am fascinated by the city of Istanbul. It is one of my top places that I want to visit. I just can't get enough books about it. When I was in Boston a couple of months ago, I found this copy of In Ruins by Christopher Woodward at the Brattle Bookshop. This book takes us through some ruins and architectural remains while ruminating on the power that such places have over us. Next, I picked up The Art of Rivalry, Four Friendships, Betrayals, and Breakthroughs in Modern Art by Sebastian Smay. This book tells the stories of four pairs of celebrated artists and the sometimes supportive, sometimes contentious relationships they had with one another as contemporaries. I also got I'm a Joke and So Are You, a comedian's take on what makes us human by Robin Ince. Robin Ince is a British comedian, which is probably why I could find this book nowhere in the United States of America. I had to order it from Better World Books so they could ship it to me from the UK. In this book, he talks about the quirks of being a human. He gives his own observations, but he also does interviews with other comedians, with neuroscientists and psychologists. I really like Robin Inns, so I'm excited to read this. The next book I picked up is Waking, Dreaming, Being 
Self and Consciousness in Neuroscience, Meditation, and Philosophy by Evan Thompson. This seems to be a very brainy, philosophical book. It argues that our sense of self changes depending on our state of consciousness. So our self is different when we're daydreaming, when we're awake, or when we are fully asleep. I think this is going to be a mental workout. I also picked up Buried Alive, The Terrifying History of Our Most Primal Fear by Jan Bondesen. Before we had scientific methods of ascertaining whether or not someone was actually dead versus just in a coma or another similar state, there was a very real fear of being buried alive. This is a history of that fear, but also of the methods that people would use to ensure someone was actually dead. And when I was paging through this, some of those seem fairly wacky. This might be my favorite transition between books and a book haul ever, because the next book I would like to show you is called who Says You're Dead? Medical and Ethical Dilemmas for the Curious and Concerned by Jacob Apple. This is essentially the medical book version of the game of what would you do? It presents you with ethical dilemmas. Each situation is presented alongside reflections on science, history, and philosophy, and the author will also give you real life examples of how similar situations were handled. This sounds like a really interesting thought experiment. Next up is Dreadful Diseases, Terrible Treatments, A Story of Medicine Through the Ages by Jonathan J. Moore. I actually started laughing when I saw this one at a library book sale. This is an illustrated history of a number of diseases and the many, oftentimes misguided ways that they've been treated over the centuries. Keeping up the morbid theme, I also picked up Cranioclepti, Grave Robbing and the Search for Genius by Colin Dickey. This is the history of a very strange urge, the urge to collect the skulls of famous people, either to study them, to display them, or just to possess them. This is also by the author of Ghostland, which was a very popular nonfiction book a few years back that I still need to read. I also picked up Frankenstein and the Birth of Science, the era of ingenuity that electrified science and fiction by Joel Levy. This book is all about how scientific developments during the Romantic era helped to inspire Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. I do own a few other books that are somewhat similar to this, but this was really cheap at a book sale, so gotta collect them all. Another book I picked up at a book sale is The Viral Storm, The Dawn of a New Pandemic Age by Nathan Wolf. In addition to having a very metal title, this book also tells the history of how viruses have evolved alongside humankind and how our modern lives are making us particularly susceptible to viral outbreaks. You know, just a light beach read. Off of Book Outlet, I picked up Spare Parts, In Praise of Your Appendix and Other Unappreciated Organs by Carol Ann Rensler. This book takes a look at some of the body parts that we've come to see as expendable. It tries to make a case for some of them, saying that they may have more of a reason for existing than you may think, while admitting that no, some of them really don't need to exist. As a person who no longer has a gallbladder, I'm very interested to see if that makes an appearance in this book. One of the rare books that I actually picked up new is The Secret Lives of Bats, My Adventures with the World's Most Misunderstood Mammals by Merlin Tuttle. This is one of the books that you all voted on when I took you through a tour of my wish list and asked for your help in selecting which two books I would buy for my birthday. I obviously ended up buying this book all about bats, written by a bat researcher. I think bats are amazing and so cute. I don't know why anyone thinks they're scary. This next book is probably my most anticipated book of 2020. That book is The Falcon Thief. A True Tale of Adventure, Treachery, and the Hunt for the Perfect Bird by Joshua Hammer. This is a true crime book all about how in 2010, a man was apprehended at an airport with rare stolen peregrine falcon eggs strapped to his body. It goes on to tell a larger tale about his motivation and how royals in the United Arab Emirates collect raptors. This book sounds like a combination of The Feather Thief and H's for Hawk, and I need to stop myself from picking this book up right now. Another upcoming bird book for 2020 is American Birds, A Literary Companion. This is a collection of writings about birds from American writers, and this one comes out in March of next year. But going back to 2019 briefly, I also have the 2019 edition of The Best American Science and Nature Writing. This is the annual collection of all the best American science and nature writing of the previous year, and this one was edited by my beloved Cy Montgomery. The last four books I have to show you in this haul are all food and beverage books, starting with Shadows in the Vineyard, The True Story of the Plot to Poison the World's Greatest Wine by Maximilian Potter. When you think of a true crime book, you're normally not thinking about wine, but this is indeed the crazy true story of the plot to destroy the 
vines of Burgundy's finest and most expensive wine. I really enjoyed food critic and writer Ruth Reichel's latest memoir, Save Me the Plums, when I read it earlier this year. So when I saw an earlier memoir of hers, Comfort Me with Apples, at a library book sale, I had to pick it up. This book was written as kind of a sequel to her first memoir, Tender at the Bone, which I have not yet read and need to get my hands on. But this book picks up the fun in 1978 and goes on to tell her story from that point. It contains a lot of food stories, recipes, and all that yummy stuff. The publisher Catapult contacted me and asked me if I would like to receive this next one and received a resounding yes from me because this is more food writing called Eat Joy. This is an illustrated collection of food writing from 31 well-known authors, and it contains the recipes for these dishes that are near and dear to their hearts. I cannot wait to dig into this one right in time for Thanksgiving. The last book I have to show you in this haul is the other book that you voted on in my wish list video. That book is To Drink and to Eat, Tastes and Tales from a French Kitchen, Volume 1. This is a combination of food writing, travel writing, and recipes all in comic form. I'm pretty sure everyone wanted me to pick this one up because I I was laughing out loud when I was paging through the preview of this one and everyone thought I would enjoy it. And I really think I'm going to. I can't wait to read this one. So those are all the nonfiction books that I've picked up recently. This is actually the last haul I am going to do in 2019. But don't you worry, I will pick up more nonfiction in 2020. If you've read any of these books, if you've heard about any of them, or if you'd now like to get your hands on them after having seen them in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you'd prefer to chat with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and I will put the links to all of my profiles in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.